Good morning, my friends. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This morning, my grandchildren were here again, and, and Rylan set up my uh, camera or the phone and my table, and, and he he's almost eight. In a few days, he's going to be eight, by God's grace. And so I am sitting in a different position and just loving how my grandchildren are going up to to love the Lord, and of course they are children, of course we correct them, but yesterday they were over here, six of them. We have a seven twin in heaven that the Lord has taken home and uh, before she was born. But um, these six, I have to watch. Of course, I love teaching them Armenian. I love teaching them God's word. But I have to watch how I deal with each one because they are each so different. But at the same time, I want them to know Mitz Mama loves each one the same. Loves them as much as I can love them, but all the same. Because as I was reading Isaac and Rebecca's story, this comes up so clearly because in chapter 25 they are going to have twins and when the children are struggling in rebecca rebecca goes to the lord and inquires of the lord and the lord said unto her in verse 23 two nations are in your womb two manner of people shall be separated from you and the one people shall be stronger than the other the elder shall serve the younger I see God's plan even before we are born. That is so incredible to me that God knows what we're going to be. He has plans for us before we were even born. He has plans for us because he says, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord in Jeremiah 29. And then we see when these children are born, because in verse 28, it says, Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison and Rebecca loved Jacob. They should have not put distinction between them because this puts such a big burden on these children, knowing that the daddy loved one and the mama loved the other one. And then one day Jacob is preparing lentil soup and Esau comes in very hungry. Esau says, give me some soup. Jacob says, well, give me your birthright. Because Jacob is watching how daddy loves Esau more than daddy loves him. So he thinks, if I am the firstborn, maybe daddy will love me more. And so here he's asking him. And uh, Esau says, what is my birthright to me if I am going to die of hunger right now? Sure, he says, you'll be the firstborn. And then... There is a little line there that says, and Esau despised his birthright. You know, God sees everything. God hears everything. And it says, Esau despised his birthright. And so here we see the story going on in chapter 27. Now, Isaac is old and he is calling only Esau, the eldest, and says to him, go prepare me some venison because I know I'm going to die. I don't know when, but... I want to bless you, my son. He doesn't call both sons to bless, but he calls only Esau. So Rebecca hears this. Rebecca calls Jacob, and they come up with this plan, and they deceive Isaac. So Jacob gets all the blessings, and we will read the story. It is so sad how there is such a hatred started into two uh, brothers and I really felt like this morning as I was reading the story that it started with the parents Isaac and Rebecca instead of loving both sons the same Isaac blessing both sons in his old age he put a distinction there and then we will see how Jacob had to walk it out many many years the Lord walked it out of him the hatred and Esau's hatred, the two brothers that were hating each other. So this morning, the word of the Lord is, you know, love your children the same. Let them know that you love each one the same. Yes, you treat them differently because of how they're made. You have to know your children, how to treat them. But God wants us to show them love. And at the same time, in Deuteronomy, it says, teach them God's word, sitting, getting up. It's so important 
that we will teach our children and our grandchildren the ways of the Lord because this world is so changing. It is such a horrible, horrible things that are happening in our schools, in our, in our different parts of this world and that we have to depend on the Lord to watch over our children as we teach them God's word and then to see them walking it out because God's word will not return void. It is powerful when we teach it to our children, our grandchildren, they will teach it to their children and the generations will be blessed by the Lord. Be blessed today.